a little housekeeping at the start of the lecture. Every, um, every year, I'm always looking for ways to try and improve this course. And um, last year, I got this um, note from uh, Professor Dean about things that um, were kind of lacking in student skills as they were coming into Construction Tech 1. I've always tried to really be addressing these all the time. Um, some things changed with, at the point that this was written, and that was the ability to actually export inside of Revit in 2022 uh, to a PDF. And so um, that kind of addresses that first one. Um, it used to be that there was some confusion with students because of the limited PDF export capabilities if they didn't have Adobe, but that's been solved by the export range. One of the things I haven't mentioned, I want to make a point of in this slide, is the idea of combining all of our um, our output files. Like, for instance, when we made a drawing that had two technical drawings in a, in a in a, um, a rendering sheet to it, we could combine those all into a single PDF file. And so um, I want to make that apparent to you. You've already used the export function a lot. And I just want to call your attention to the ability to combine any selected views in sheets that you choose up in the top um, to have them be combined into a single uh, PDF. And that's really useful, um, allowing somebody to open a single file and see all of the contents. So just a little uh, tip and a heads up. I wanted to uh, call some attention to a few of the um, in-class um, container modifications that I thought were, um, you know, they caught my eye, I thought were interesting and had that little bit of extra effort to them. And so this is uh, three of those. I thought this was very nice. Um, I'm hoping that in lecture we have a little bit of commentary about this. I was uh, really struck by the quality of rendering. This is Buffalo Rising. This is a local uh, blog site that talks about new projects. And this is done by, I believe, a, a Rochester firm. Actually, it might have a presence here. I don't really want to name any firm. But I, I wanted to have a little discussion about the quality of rendering. And there's nothing wrong with this rendering, but I think we're already um, pretty well along in this course that we can actually create higher quality renderings. And the question might be, did the, um, uh, did the architect decide that they didn't want to have that level of realism in their renderings? Uh, was it intentional? And uh, what do you guys think about that? So uh, I hope we'll be able to have a little discussion about that. I wanted to point your attention to a couple of sites that can be really helpful to you. Um, these are um, actually, they're, um, these are mostly YouTube contents. It makes it very accessible, not unlike the, the way we learn in this course. Um, Revit Pure, um, a, a young gentleman um, has put together just an incredible amount of resources about using, you know, basically Revit, BIM modelers, um, but specifically Revit, and all kinds of, of really helpful information. So um, this is hyperlinked. If you click on it, it'll take you to the website. And everything uh, here just seems, you know, some of it gets down into a lot of the nitty gritty details, but there's a many, you know, really helpful, like this Revit tutorial on how to make great elevations talks about some of the things that the we've done effect. in the course in order to generate nice shadow details, line weights, talks a little bit about, about the idea of how the ambient shadows. shadows enhance things. So, um, but, you know, obviously that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg of Revit Pure. Another one that you probably already, if you're already solving your problems in Revit and you've been Googling it, you've come up to the Balkan Al Architect, um, also, um, a, a really entertaining and informative um, um, s set of solutions this person has put together um, with lots of content. And uh, one that I've spent a, quite a bit of time is um, the Revit Kid has um, a site called BIM After Dark, and um, he brings guest hosts in, and he also offers all kinds of suggestions, comparisons of things. So I found this to be uh, really helpful for my education. And there's some more that are maybe a little more obscure, some that you'll probably discover on your own that I haven't even found. Um, the Aussie BIM Guru, this is um, from Australia. Um, a, a really good personable um, presentation on all kinds of techniques and ideas with inside of mostly Revit, but um, you know, with the idea of, of the BIM um, environment. And some of the projects that I do, I believe it is, I'm not sure it's in computer viz, but I know the project that I do in advanced structures is based on some of the learning that uh, he's taught me. Time to sign into lecture, a reminder, if you haven't. Um, 
this is just a cool little tidbit of information. I, I think that our our software, um, you know, the, the more you get interested in it and actually bogged down by the idea of having to create details, it, some of these things come up as little sweet solutions to problems. One of them is, is that you can, um, after doing the wall section that we created and then having to go in and place the dimensional lumber and the insulation in that, um, this would have more meaning. Um, anytime you do a wall sweep and you want to have more detail in, this is just a little video clip that um, describes how you can automatically, whenever you cut a section, have these elements that show that might define more construction details that are going on within that component of the building. So I found this to be a really kind of a neat tip. Um, you may not find, obviously in school, you won't find many opportunities for this because we're moving through in studio clips so fast that you, you just don't need this kind of a, a drafting aid. Uh, but if you're in practice, if you're interning, um, a really cool technique to help simplify uh, section uh, wall section details. And with that, I was also just making a comment, um, kind of really surprised um, by those who are coming from other programs, usually two-year programs, uh, making the comment that uh, making wall sections inside of Revit was a lot faster and more rewarding than it would have been using AutoCAD. And um, this actually kind of flies in the face of a lot of um, old dye and wool uh, kind of uh, CAD users who would also always revert to AutoCAD in order to detail their walls. So I was really happy to see that kind of change of, I guess, momentum and energy and seeing that um, our BIM modeler can really do a lot of the details that we thought were relegated to um, some of our other software. A uh, quick reminder, next week is our check drawing. Um, it'll happen during the class time. I'll probably allow that to be taken remotely since we all need to have access to computers and a, a little bit of, uh, I guess, workspace. So um, just be reminded of that. And um, I'm going to make a couple of mentions about things that have kind of tripped people up. I want to remind you um, to be aware that storefront glazing is a wall tool. It's not a window tool. And that roof styles, um, you should be a little familiar with shed, shed, hip, flat roof styles, just very basic stuff. The check drawing is really only a, a basic assessment of your skills, uh, which is basic drafting, you know, creating views, a plan view, laying out some walls, putting some roofs on, inserting some windows, putting some dimensions on. It usually reaffirms all that you've learned, um, well, actually up until about the, you know, like the fifth or sixth week. So, um, Anyway, um, and, and the grading will probably be you either completed it or you didn't type of thing. So very important that you make an attempt at it and complete it within the, I guess it'll be an hour, hour and a half uh, runtime of our lecture. I'm also, I just want to take a minute to try and encourage those of you that have fallen behind. Um, this is a look at the two lectures that I have. All the greens are completed projects. All the whites are the ones are incompleted projects. And some of you have recently, and we can go right about to M7, um, and start to see um, a lot of uh, gaps forming here. So things were really complete up until um, that kind of uh, M7. Um, and I want to encourage you to keep plugging away at it. It'll probably take you a while, but um, uh, please don't get too discouraged. Um, I'm trying to track you as closely as I can, and um, it's all still doable. Um, so um, hopefully just encourage you and keep, keep at it. Um, even if you don't complete all of the assignments, you could still probably, um, well, you for sure can secure a passing grade. And um, without completing all the projects, you still may be able to get a B depending on how well you've done, how much you get completed. And uh, that pretty well covers the pre-lecture. And then we'll start talking about modular curtain wall construction in the next clip which is actually the one I'm going to use from last year because nothing's changed with inside of that content.